Hello, and welcome to an introduction to Grails 3.0. I'm your host, Dan Vega, and today we're going to look at creating and running your first Grails application. The first thing we'll want to do is install Grails. To do so, we're going to go over to the grails.org website and click on Documentation. Here there's a Downloading Grails User Guide that shows you how to download the binary distribution or use GVM. Also, if you head into the documentation and go down to Downloading and Installing, it'll show you how to set this up on both Unix, Unix and Linux-based systems, as well as Windows. If we head back over to that user guide, though, there's a section on GVM. GVM is a great tool for managing different versions of programs like Rails or Gradle or Groovy or, or everything else in, in the ecosystem that we're working in. I've also previously done a screencast on GVM, so I'll link to that below if you're interested in watching that. So for this video, I'm going to use GVM. So if we pop over to Terminal uh, and we use GVM list Grails, this will show us all the available versions of Grails to us. You'll notice these ones with the asterisks are the ones that I have installed. And the one with the caret is the current one that we're using. This is a nice tool to be able to switch between different versions. So right now I'm using 3.0.1 and we're going to go ahead and run with that. So after you get it installed, we're going to run the command grails space dash version. Whoops, might want to type that right. And so when we do that, it'll give us the version of Grails that we're on, as well as the version of Groovy and the JVM that we're running. So some great information to get started. So now we want to look at creating an application. If we go ahead and just type the Grails command, it's going to give us some information about what it's looking for. So there are two main commands. We're either going to be creating an application or creating a plugin. So we're, today we're going to create an app, and there is a argument that you can pass to create app for what profile you want to use. Now profiles are new to Groovy 3.0, or to Grails 3.0, and they're really great. Uh, it encapsulates um, a set of, like an, an application structure, a set of commands, plugins, and capabilities. For example, you'll see the default there if we don't do anything is web. And the web profile allows for construction of web applications deployable to a server container. So in the future, we might see more, um, we, we're going to see this expanded. And even yesterday, I just saw another one. Uh, somebody came out with one, and I want to link to this below. But there is a, somebody created a web API profile. And what this will do is, for those of us who create Grails apps uh, more on the REST end and not using a lot of the view technology that Grails has, this is perfect. Um, so I'll link to this below. I, I'm not sure if this pull request was accepted yet or not, but we'll take a look at it. And when it's available, you'll just be able to create an app and pass in the profile web API, and it kind of gives you a kickstart to your application. So for right now, we're just going to create a normal Grails app. So let's go Grails, create app, and then give it the name. We'll just say this is a G3 demo. And you'll see right away, it's going to go ahead and kickstart that and create an application. So let's see, we have a folder now called G3 demo. So if we jump into that, we will see our base, you know, our normal files that Grails creates for us. The next thing we want to do is run this app. So again, like we have done in, in the past, you can run the app by using Grails run app command. And what this is going to do is go ahead and run the build. Uh, if you, if this is the first time you're running this and it needs to download any dependencies, it will. Uh, I've done this a couple times on this machine. so you won't see it downloading a lot of the dependencies that it needs because they're all stored they're all stored in like a local repository. You may see a bunch of things being downloaded, but don't worry about that. So once we're ready, it'll say Grails application is now running. Let's go ahead and jump over to our browser and visit localhost 8080. And there we go. Our application's up and running. Now, it doesn't really do much, but we've created an application and it's up and running. 
We can see some information about our app. Environment is development. Again, profiles are new, but it's nice that we see what type of profile we're using right off the bat. It shows us the version, uh, the Grails and Groovy versions, and the JVM. And it also shows us that reloading uh, active is set to true. So that's good to know. So let's go back and we'll go ahead and stop this. We can go ahead and halt this by using Control C and this will shut down our application for the moment. And what we're gonna look at next is the Grails interactive mode. So just as we did in previous versions of Grails, we have an interactive mode. If we type in Grails, that'll throw us into the interactive mode and you'll notice it because we're in there, you'll see this is in a, kind of a green color here. So Grails, now we can type any of the commands. If we're not sure what these commands are, you can hit the tab button and see all of the different commands. So we're not gonna run through all these, but we'll look at a couple. So if we wanted to compile, we'll go ahead and run the compile command. And again, this is kind of running off of Gradle. So it's going, you know, using Gradle's really great power of like figuring out what, you know, not repeating itself. So in this case, um, in this case, it knew it knows that it needs to compile Java, compile or does does not need to compile Java or compile Groovy, but it need, did need to do these two things. So now, if we run compile again, it realizes that hey, nothing's changed. I've already done all this, and that's why you'll see those incremental builds just really, really fast. Uh, the next thing I want to look at is the package. So. Uh, there's a command in here called package. In previous versions of Grails, we would run the war command, and that war command would give us a war file that then we could then deploy to our server container. Uh, in Grails 3, we have this package command that does a little bit more for us. So let's go ahead and run package. And when that's done, I'm going to open up a new tab here and jump into that directory. So you see it's going through, it's doing a bunch of stuff. Gradle's doing its thing down here. And it should be just about done. Let's go. And it's done. So now we're going to jump into a new tab. I want to show you something. So now there's a build folder. If we jump into build and libs, you'll see some files in here. So now we have a jar file and a war file. So now, just like before, we can take this war file and deploy it to our servlet container. Um, we can also run a jar file. So this is the notion of a fat jar versus a war. And there's pros and cons to both, depending on what your needs are. But this fat jar, if you will, is self-contained and runnable. So you can hand it off to somebody, or even better, you can use it on uh, one of these cloud services like Cloud Foundry or Heroku. And you can just kind of take this jar, deploy it to the cloud, and you're up and running. And, and it's really nice. Um, you can also run it right here. So if we go java-jar, and let's run that. And this is going to take a second to run, but once it, up, once it kicks in and starts, it's going to say, hey, you can browse to localhost 8080 again. And now we'll be able to just visit our, our website that, you know, the same one that we just saw when we ran a Grails run app. So this is really cool. It's a, a, it has everything contained within this jar that you need to run this application. So this is really nice. So now we're up and running again. And I'm just going to refresh this. And again, it's going to be the same thing here. So we can see our, our applications up and running. So that's really cool. Um, that's really nice to have if you ask me. So let's clear this out. Um, I think that's it for interactive mode. Next we're going to look at IntelliJ. So now that we've kind of created our app and reran it a couple times, it's time to start doing some things. So we'll want to import this into our favorite IDE. At the time of this uh, creating this tutorial, Groovy and Grails tool suite has been it basically is done being developed. Uh, they came out with the last Pivotal came out with the last release for that I think a week ago, and they'll no longer be supporting that product. So you can still continue to use that if you like. Uh, I'm a huge fan of IntelliJ, so if you want, uh, I would definitely recommend checking out IntelliJ. The cool thing about Grails three 
too is that you can use just a free community edition because we're just working with basically a Gradle build file uh, that we need to import and get our project up and running. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're gonna open up IntelliJ ID 14. I'm actually running 14.1.1 or something like that. Um, but 14 should work for you. Now again, I am running Ultimate Edition, but you should be able to run Community as well. So now we're just gonna import a project and we're going to go into Grails, and let's see, where is it? Dev, Grails, not sure what happened there. So import, Dev, Grails, there it is. So now we just want to point to that build.gradle file. Come in here, use that and that. And now it's going to import that project or import that uh, Gradle build file for us. Okay, so now we're up and running. Uh, again, we can, depending on what version we're using, I'm in Ultimate, we can use the Grails view that the Ultimate Edition gives us. It's a little off right now because they don't have support for, Gra uh, for Grails 3 yet. So you see some off folders here. Um, but you will see like our domain classes, controllers, views, services. I'm just going to jump into project because if because if you're using the community edition, this is probably what you'll be looking at. So the first thing you'll see here is the Gradle build file. Uh, this should look pretty familiar if you've ever done anything in Gradle. If not, don't worry. There's not a lot going on here. There's some different plugins, especially for like Spring Boot, but um, the, the big thing that you want to look at is the dependency block here. This is what we used to do in our build config. This is now done in our build file. So that's that. If we jump into uh, Grails app, a lot of this should start to look familiar. We have a configuration file. You'll notice there's a lot of files that are missing. If, if you think they're gone, they are. some of them actually are. But don't worry, there's still places to do everything you're used to doing. So the first thing is this application.yaml file. This is the main configuration file for your app. I'm a little confused that, so you can write a Groovy application configuration. So if you, if you create an application.groovy file and drop it in here, it'll use that. Uh, but I'm a little confused on why they decided to go with YAML as the default. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Just know that you can use either or. Um, so, here is a lot of the configuration. You should, you know, a lot of this should look pretty familiar. And remember in 2.x.x, we had a data source.groovy file for configuration. That's built right into the application configuration. So you set up your data source info here, and then your different environments. Um, maybe you have someone like an H2 in development and MySQL or SQL server in production. So this is where you'll do your application configuration. There's a logbag.groovy for configuring logging. And then our resources.groovy here for creating um, our spring beans. A lot of the other stuff should look very familiar. We have controllers. One thing right out of the box is URL mappings is moved to the controller folder. So whereas that used to live in conf, now, it's lived, now it lives here. Uh, domain. Um, the only thing that's going to stand out is really different here is the init folder. And so our bootstrap, which was in the conf directory, is now here in our init folder. And we're going to have a main application file. And this application file is kind of the main class of our app. And if you've done any work in Spring Boot, uh, this should look pretty familiar. So the great thing about this now is we don't need a Grails run configuration to kick this project off. We can actually come right in here and use this as our main class and run application.main. All right, so the application started. We can go visit it. And you'll notice again, our application's up and running. So we just, instead of running this from a Grails type uh, run configuration we just started up as a main class the one thing to note here you'll see reloading active is false 
The reason that is because we're not running this with the run app command, which takes care of the reloading argument, what needs to happen for reloading to be active. So let's go ahead and stop this, and I'm gonna just show you one little trick to get that to work. If we go into run and edit configurations, we go into VM options and just pass an X verify of none. And let's go ahead and run that again. So now this time it'll pass that argument in and because of that it'll actually allow us to turn on uh, Spring Reloaded. So this time when we go ahead and launch the application in the browser we should see that Spring Loaded or that reloading is active. And we'll open it up. And there it is, now reloading's active. So that's a, a, just a little trick if you're gonna run it from the application class, uh, how to get reloaded active. So I think that's all we're gonna cover today. Hopefully next time we'll dive in and, and actually start building an application just to kind of look at some of the different features in three as well as just look at Grail's development in general. So as always, if you like this video, please let me know below. Uh, subscribe. Any feedback is definitely welcomed. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks and have a good day.